So you want to do some handmade Christmas cards, but you want to keep it simple. Well, hi, I'm G, this is my art channel, and I show you just how to do that. So I start with the card, and I use this A5 textured card. It comes in multicolors from a group called Paper Mania. But I'm just interested in the green ones for my green Christmas tree picture. So I take a slice of card, and then I fold that A5 card in half. That gives me a nice A6 size card that will of course fit inside an A6 or C6 size envelope, just absolutely fine. So now I've got the card, I need to get the picture ready that goes on the card. So I cut myself an A6 size piece of uh, watercolour paper as well. And all I do is I fold that in half and then I unfold it and I cut it in half. So I've got two A7 size pieces and there you can see one fitting on the front of the card and it fits nice with a border of green all the way around the outside. And speaking of borders, I put a half a centimetre border around one of those pieces of watercolour paper that I've just cut. And then I start drawing my simple tree motif on the inside of that watercolour paper. So you can see I do a central line, I draw a basic triangle kind of shape to start with, with the stalk for the trunk at the very bottom. And then I just split it into three pieces. You can see I split across once, then twice. And those are going to help me with the sections of the tree so I know which is the sort of top part of the tree, which is the middle bit, and then which is the big fat one wide bottom or base of the tree. So I'm going to use this piece as a template. So once I've drawn out the tree, then I break out a very, very simple and basic uh, craft knife, one of those little plastic ones that you can lock, and I'm going to cut my template out of this first piece of watercolour paper. So that's what you can see me doing now, cutting very, very carefully across all of those pencil lines, and that's why you can see I left that one half a centimetre border in there, so that I've got the border holds together the template once I've cut out the entire shape of the tree. I want to make a lot of this kind of card, so that's why I've cut the template, and that will allow me to keep making quite a few of these that look very regular and similar. There's the second piece of watercolour paper that I cut out earlier. I take the template and I stick a couple of tiny little bits of blue tack on the very back of the frame of the template. And then I flip it over and I stick it down on top of the other piece of A7 size watercolour paper. Remember I cut the two earlier? Well that's the second one underneath. Now that I've got the template on top, then I can go around all of my edges using a pencil and it gives me a very, very quick tree that you know looks the same as the one that I did previously, has that kind of regularity for all of these cards to look pretty similar. You might be looking at it going, oh, I don't want all the cards to look uniform and similar, but don't worry. When I get to the painting stage, I'll show you three different ways that you can make these cards look different. So then once I've got the whole thing drawn out, I need to carefully remove the template. So I just get my fingernails in there and I sort of pop off the template and leave the drawing underneath. And that's why I only put tiny little bits of blue tech on, just enough to stick it. Then I just take a rubber and I rub out some of those edges because I put a half a centimeter border on the piece of paper underneath that I didn't really need to do. So I just rub out some of those bits and bobs and I tidy it up. And there you go, you've got the template next to the drawing. So next up I need to paint it. So the first thing that I do is I get the piece of card, I put um, bits of blue tack on the bottom again and I stick it down. And I'm going to use my watercolour markers, Winsor & Newton watercolour markers, and I start off with Hooker's Green. So what you can see me doing is using the brush tip of Hooker's Green and I am basically just outlining the tree but also doing some more serious fills and doing some very, very heavy areas that you can see in this next clip. There you go, I've transitioned it so you can see I use a lot of Hooker's Green towards the top where it's going to be darker and less towards the bottom where I want it to be lighter. So a size six sable round brush is what I'm using here. Lots of water on there and I dollop the water on and I start moving it around and blending it together with the watercolor marker that I've put on. And I'm usually putting this water on virtually straight after I've done all of the watercolor marker pen marks. So like I said, I add quite a bit of water and I blend it in all the way around so I've got no drying lines. I start down in that bottom left corner and I work my way up and around the tree and then come down and finish last at this bottom right hand corner. And when it dries, that's what it looks like and it's time for a bit of snow. And I'm gonna add this using a white paint pen, a Posca PC3M, not the thinnest one that you can get so that those snowflakes are gonna be big and show up. And the way that I do my snowflakes here is I just do them in sort of rough clumps of five. You know, I just dot one, two, three, four, five, move on. And for a bit of variety, I am going to dot some smaller ones in. And for this, I use a white gel pen and I use the Sakura Jelly Roll pen to do this. So here I'm just dotting in some smaller little snowflakes around those slightly bigger ones. So you've got a bit of variety in the background between sort of the bigger flakes and some smaller ones. Hopefully it'll give it a bit of depth. And that is pretty much one design done. 
So the second version I'm going to do, I'm going to use two colors here. So I'm using the hooker's green again, and I do the whole thing with hooker's green, just like I did before. But then I add some dark color to the top. So I'm using indigo here, and I'm sort of doing some rough little bits of indigo at the top here, so that when I start blending it with the water, the top's going to look very much darker than the bottom. So now I can start adding the water, and again, I put on lots of water using the size 6 sable brush with the very, very fine tip that allows you to get into all those little nooks and crannies. And you can see me adding in and blending in the indigo at the top with the hooker's green. So now I'm getting a sort of dark to light kind of look to the painting. And once I get about three quarters away around, I think, right, I'm actually going to drop some clean water on that bit I've just done over on the other side. So I get the brush, I dip it in some clean water, and I just dot that clean water onto the other side. And hopefully, once I do it on the right-hand side as well, I'm going to be left with some sort of little areas that will bloom outwards. So you get these slightly little sort of glowy kind of areas in the watercolor. You can see them starting to take shape there. And I just dot in little dots of water too much and you'll get a massive effect. So that was design number two. I was straight on to design or version number three. And for this one, I'm using three colors. So I do the hooker's green as an outline, but then I start to use a, a lighter green for the bottom area. So I'm using sap green here, and I just pop in a little bit of rough sap green around the bottom area, just so that that's going to have a little bit of a lighter look, then hooker's green in the middle, and then still the indigo towards the top section. So you see me finish off with the hooker's green, and I put in sap green around the bottom, and then I add the dark color, the indigo at the top. So it's going to really have that sort of light, medium, dark color, hopefully. So starting at the bottom, I blend all of those colors together from light to medium to dark. And I also drop in my first little drops of clean water to get the same effect as what I did in version two. So there you can see. Then I go back in and I get some more clean water on my brush and I drop some more, some second dots of clean water right in the very center of where I drop the first dots of clean water. So what I'm hoping to get is an effect where it's like much brighter in the middle. So there you go, that's what it looks like once it dried. And it, it was a bit brighter in the middle, but I also went in with the Posca paint marker again and I decided to just put white dots in the center of each one of those little kind of a bloom kind of effects. So they could be like snow or they might just be supposed to be like um, lights seen through a snow blizzard in the background. Now that I've got all three of them done, I need to worry about glue and sticking the pictures down on the card. So for this, I use clear Prit PVA glue. So it's nice and clear. It's not the white stuff that goes clear. It's clear from the get-go. And I use my daughter's brush here because always use an old or a rough brush when you're using glue because it can wreck your brushes. Uh, she won't mind. Uh, and I just flip over the picture and I put PVA glue, clear PVA glue, a thin layer on the back of the painted piece of um, paper and then all I have to do is flip that over and gently put it down on top of my card and try and make sure that I line the edges and the borders up so that they are roughly even all the way around with a little bit of extra space at the bottom. Now, thick paper that has been painted on can warp a little bit and doesn't always stick down brilliantly. So I hold it down with my fingers, put a piece of paper down over the top of it, and then hold it down with my hands until it dries. Now, unfortunately, what you can see here and what I'm pointing out is I did get a bit of clear PVA on my fingers and it ended up getting stuck on the edge of the card. So be super careful with your glue, whatever glue you're using. Don't make the same mistake I did. So on the underneath, I want to add the message. And here I just got some of these very, very simple kind of like um, stick-on lettering. Again, a company called Do Crafts. And luckily, it matches. And Happy Christmas just goes right across the bottom. So I carefully peel off the happy. And I'm trying to put that centrally and also over towards the left. So centrally between the bottom of my painting and the bottom of my card. And all you have to do is like stick it down and then press it down with your fingers. And then I peel off Christmas. And I've just got to try and make sure that I line that up carefully so the C is at the bottom with um, happy as well. And then I can just gradually press that down and sort of manipulate a little bit, move it a little bit so that I can stick down Christmas so it's in line with happy. And then all of the lettering is pretty much done. <laughs> So there you go, all three side by side, so you can see the different versions, different approaches. And that is three simple Christmas cards made with the basic bare minimum of equipment. And of course, you've got the template, so you can make dozens and dozens of these and send them out to your family and friends. Please let me know what you thought of the video, leave a comment below, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.